Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to the new episode of T20E World. Hugo here, and I have a special guest with us, Ina Coveney. Say hello, Ina. Hi, everybody. Ina Hugo, thank you so much for having me here. I am so excited about this conversation. Oh, yeah. I am so stoked as, as well because we are touching upon such a cool topic. And just for our listeners, we are going to be talking about how you make six figures without ever hitting 1,000 followers on social media. Very important topic. But before we dive into that, Ina, I want you to share a little bit about yourself. I know you're the CEO and the founder of The Global Phenomenon. I know that you've been on talk shows like NBC News and USA Today. So congratulations, because I know that list is long. So it's wonderful to have you on T20E World. So Ina, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, no, thank you so much for that introduction, Hugo. And um, hi, everybody. I am actually from Venezuela. So before you spend the rest of the hour trying to figure out where the accent is coming from, it is Venezuelan. Um, yeah, and it, my entrepreneurial story is like a lot of people's, right? I was in corporate for 15 years. I was a software project manager, if you must know. And uh, for the longest time, I had this feeling that I wanted to do something more with my life. I, but I had no examples. There was nobody around me who was doing anything other than getting a job and moving up the ladder. And that's the way you made money. Then one day I'm sitting across from my boss and um, he's about, you know, I'm, I'm young. He's 20 years older than I am. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm noticing as he's talking in his office that he has pretty much the same commute that I do. He has, you know, a family and he comes to the same place as I do. I started to see basically no difference between his life and mine, even though clearly he's making more money. I'm like, no. <laughs> are you trying to tell me that in 20 years I will have moved three feet from where I am right now. Yes. And it, it started to become a thing like, I don't want to be here, but I have no idea what else is there. Um, then when I had my first son, and this was nine years ago, um, I was on maternity leave and a friend asked me to make some changes to her website. So I did. I'm like, yeah, sure. Here you go. And she wanted to pay me. I'm like, but it, this was a favor. Don't worry about it. Like I'm, I'm on maternity leave. What else am I doing? And she's like, no, no, no. This is a business and you're a vendor and I'm paying you. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and that's where everything started for me nine years ago. What? Started making websites for people and things like that. And as I became more aware of the online coaching world, I started to fall in love with those people who were putting themselves out there. I started to see that there were some people's careers were based on going live on video online. And I'm I'm a I'm a big performer, even when I was in corporate doing my presentations was like where I excelled. And I'm like, are you telling me? I could have a career where people are going to pay me and my job is to show up online. So I, I became like enamored with this world and I am I'm super happy to be here. My, my brand, The Global Phenomenon, is about the online coaching industry because it gives people like me who didn't know there was something else an opportunity to monetize the skills they already have. And I can't wait to dive into this because I really feel like I fell for every bad advice when I first joined. And I, I can't wait to tell you what all of that was so people can start making money even if they don't have a large audience. And Nina, that's one of the, the key points that we try to make here at T20E World is our target audience really is, you know, the young entrepreneurs, the college students, even high school students that are trying to come into the corporate world eventually. And we're trying to reduce, right? We're trying to reduce the time it takes for them to figure it out, like maybe some of us have to, you know? So yeah. I also wanted to share how we met, right? Ina was a guest speaker at PodFest 2021. I, I also presented there. And then we had a, we happened to connect. I, I was able to attend. I think it was one of your presentations. I just can't remember the name of the presentation, but I just remember seeing you and you were dynamic. And I was like, you know, you. I said, we connect. I, I yeah. got over on P20E World and your schedule was just crazy. It was packed for like two weeks. Yeah. So I like, you know, between between sessions, I remember us chatting and finally eventually connecting. So thanks again, Nina, for making some time, you know, over the weekend, right? Because we're 20. Yeah. 
seven as entrepreneurs and we find that little hour and boom here we are today so not, and not only not only a week and now i have two kids and a husband and i'm like i'm in the third floor of my house right now and i'm hoping that i don't hear a stampede of people coming upstairs to ask you me gotta love something. it but i'll tell I'm, you though, i'm super happy to be here Hugo. oh that's awesome and you know one thing one thing that the pandemic did do listen with everybody working virtual I mean, come on, there's not a meeting that you're not in where there's like a dog jumping on you, <laughs> kids climbing on your back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I would love to meet your whole family. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, you, you you might. And it does right. sound like a stampede coming up the stairs. So it's you see it coming. So Ina, let's um let's dive into this because digital media marketing is huge today. A lot of people coming out of schools, anybody who's thinking about marketing or even in sales is always thinking of how do I change my brand, the world, right, through mm -hmm. digital marketing content. And then you start thinking, oh, my goodness, I don't have the followers. You're focusing. Your, your attention span always shifts over to, you know, we got to increase the followers. You yeah. know, we got to break the thousand. Then we got to break two thousand. We got to break 10K, 100K. You know, you're a perfect example of a young entrepreneur where you actually broke the six figure mark without even getting to the thousand followers. So let's dive into this. Let's talk a little bit about how you did it, you know, and, and some of the um, some of the challenges that are out there or misbeliefs that are out there when you're trying to grow an audience. Yeah. So, you know, tell me a little bit more about how you did it. And by the way, I'm going to tell you, to this day, at the time of this recording, my Instagram following is still not a thousand. <laughs> I believe that it is at like 930, 930 right, right now. And I'm going to tell you, it's Our audience, exciting. everybody heard this. Like and follow Ina Coveney on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Let's explode her page. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And I'm going to tell you, it feels good to get followers. Like when I reach 1K, I'm going to throw a little party because it's been a long road, right, to no make it there. <laughs> because I, I rely on organic marketing. So I'm, I'm going to tell you kind of like the story of this. So this is where we get into the first misconception, which you already mentioned, that you need a large following in order to make money. So you see a ton of entrepreneurs spending all of this money, and I've done this myself, by the way, I have put myself in like tens of thousands of dollars in debt, signing up for every course, every program, every coach to grow my audience. Look where my audience is right now, right? So because that's, that's the first place that people told me to go, I'm like, okay, let's just try to grow the audience. Here's the thing. An audience doesn't grow because you want it to. An audience grows because they want something from you, exactly. right? So once we realize that, right, we can start to work on ourselves. So it took me a while to realize, you know what? My audience is not growing. What am I going to do? Give up? Am I going to just throw in the towel? Think of something else? Like, what, what am I, what am I going to do now? I need to make my business work. So I got really crafty. I got really resourceful. I tapped into my brain and said, like, <laughs> okay, so this is clearly not about audience growth. It's about making money with my business. So what do I need to do to make money in my business? And I want to point out that tons of thousands of businesses have been able to thrive before the digital era. So how were businesses making money before social media existed, right? It was through relationships. And guess what? That is still the case today. So no. there is, right? There is this smoke screen that is telling you, no, wait, you have to focus on audience growth when really every entrepreneur out there, every successful entrepreneur out there is going to tell you it's about the relationships. It's about getting to know your ideal client and giving them something that they really want. And they will pay for it. So I just wanted to start with that huge misconception. Like I will throw a party when I reach 1000. I've never reached 1000 in my mailing list either. Right. It's about, am I giving value to the people who need it? And I'm super happy to dive in as deep as you want to go with this. So that is such, it's such an ins awesome intro into this topic because it's so true. We have put so much effort, energy, concern, and stresses 
right, to all of our businesses, new businesses about the growth that we have to grow first on digital marketing. It's not, mm -hmm. not that's not always the case. Ina, you said something so important, so critical that I want people that are listening to understand relationships. And I talk about this all throughout our podcast, almost in every episode. It is vital. It'll never go away. You have to build the relationship with your customer and you. You know, you have to create some sort of a comfort zone where you both come into this secure territory and can connect. You know, that's what it's about. And, and, and the other misconception is growth on digital media marketing sometimes means, oh, let me buy, let me buy some audiences. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I yeah, do. You give $150, next thing you know, you, you, you have 3,000 followers on Instagram, which is, please, that's just, anybody who's in the world of digital marketing just can go to your first post and kind of see that you have, you know, 25,000 followers and maybe four likes. So yeah. it's yeah. critical to grow like Ina has organically. And I, can I just tell you, yeah. um, I have had people on my podcast who tell me that they went for those tactics and they tell me, you know, I thought that I had to reach 10,000 followers on Instagram in order to monetize. I thought that was an important metric. So I hired a very expensive <laughs> agency to come and help me bring those numbers up. And once they did, I realized that there was no correlation between the number of people following me and the amount of money coming in. And I'm going to tell you why that is, Hugo, because it seems counterintuitive, right? It's like, Yep. If more people see my stuff, then more people will buy it. So statistically speaking, it sounds like that should work, right? Like it, people who are listening right now, they're like, yeah, Ina, that sounds nice. That's because you're selling your program, which has nothing to do with audience growth. But I know because I'm smart that if I grow my audience, more people will buy. You guys, that is the biggest misconception of all. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if I were featured in the on the front page of the New York Times tomorrow, Okay, suppose that happens. Ina Coven, like like at Ina Coven is the headline of the New York Times tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna get a million followers. Number one, how many of those are actually my ideal client? Exactly. Number two, am I able to handle that kind of load of traffic to serve these people? Number three, Wait. right? Number three, what am I gonna do now? right? What, what does the next day look like? How do I keep that flow of, of traffic coming into my account and that growth? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get a million followers like that. And the next day, half of them is going, are going to drop off. So what do we do? What, what is the right way to do it? The right way is to realize that the first clients that you have are people that you already know. Okay. Why don't we start there? You already have a network. And I know it's really hard to imagine this when you start. On day one of your business, it's so hard to believe that your family, friends, and coworkers, and people that you met 20 years ago, that they are going to be the ones that are going to buy from you. But it is it's the truth. So what are you going to do to get those people who might be interested in what you offer into a conversation? That's right. right? Can you just ask them, what is it that you're struggling with? How can I help you? And if I could help you, what would that look like? And how much would you be willing to pay for that kind of assistance, right? If I have five people that I talk to and I ask them, what do you need? How much would you pay for that, right? Like what value is it? Right there, I'm telling you, I will make five clients, okay? And, I, and one thing that I usually tell my clients is that you may think like, yeah, but that's not scalable. There's only so many people in my audience that I can actually that I can actually talk to, right? And that will sign up to work with me. Not necessarily, because those five people, after I help them, they may suggest my services to somebody else. So your audience will grow organically, even if you never touch social media, which is not what I'm recommending. I'm not saying ignore social media. I'm saying you got to know how you're going to help people and you got to get them the results so that they can come back and say, yes, Ina helped me with this. You got to work with her. Does that make sense? Total sense. Ina, thank you for sharing that because that is such vital advice. See, what Ina is talking about is really understanding your niche or your niche, right? 
once you understand that, you know what you're focusing on. You can't service everything to everybody. You know, you have a certain focal point and expertise, and you truly are trying to connect with those individuals. So that was a great point that you made. Say tomorrow we're all on the front cover of the New York Times. A lot of curiosity is going to be sparked. So, yes, you're going to see a spike in your digital media across all platforms, you know, Instagram, LinkedIn, everything. But what Ina is exactly hitting the nail on the head is when she says, you're going to have a massive drop off because why? Because it's not always the same interest once they understand what it is we're trying to service, right? So understanding your niche is so critical in your business. So yeah. Ina, let's, let's get, let's dive into how you actually figured this out and yeah. turned it into a six figure salary. Okay. I'm going to tell you one thing because <laughs> this, this just happened last night and like my jaw dropped. I'm going to tell you, I know that what I teach works, right? Because I, because I know my stuff, but it always it amazes me when my clients come back and they say like that actually worked. I'm like, Oh my God, really tell me more. Like I love, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love to hear those results. Last night, one of my clients posted that after being in business for two years, she finally figured out that she's been talking to the wrong ideal client and it was like right she's going through my course I'm a mistake. Like, right she was going through one of my exercises and she's like that exercise just made me realize i've been talking to the wrong person so i, w I want everybody to understand that getting the right ideal client um like understanding who your ideal client is and what your niche is it's not easy it it doesn't happen overnight you no, guys not. i've had four different ideal clients in four years and i consider it a process of evolution right it gets clearer and clearer i had a, a one another one of my clients i told her she needs to change some things on her online profile so that it's a little clearer what she does and when she changed it her brother came out of the woodwork complaining saying that hey you shouldn't be changing that so much because you're going to confuse people and i'm like okay and how many six-figure businesses that he, does he have oh right thank you like, yes no, know where the advice is coming Thank from, you right? So much for saying that. And <laughs> if, and and I say, change it as long as you're continuing to evolve and getting it better and better and better. Don't just get stuck with a brand or with an audience just because that's what you've been doing and you're going to look like a flake. You guys, if I worried about that, I wouldn't even have a business, right? It's a matter of evolution. Oh, you're so right. Yeah. So. Uh, if you're about to discover who your niche is, focus on right now. Who can you help? What can you help them do? And make sure this is like, please make sure that it's something that you actually enjoy doing. Love right. It. So, so Hugo, let me ask you this. How many people do you talk to that say, well, I would really like to do this, A, but B is going to to give me more money. So maybe I should do B instead. How many times do you hear that? You know, I have to say in my career, it's been pretty often because there is that, that I call it the state of limbo mm -hmm. where you're juggling in the cloud, trying to figure out, well, really, what is it? One, do I really love to do like, where's my heart and my passion, but you know what? How do I don't know how to make money in that. So maybe I should <laughs> feel comfortable in going where I know I can make money. Right. You know? And it, it's a matter of time. And I always say this, you know, in entrepreneurship, you got to figure out what your passion is first and then how do you convert it? And listen, it's okay. Not knowing it is, it's okay. And it might take some time to, to evolve as an individual and find your passions. And that might just mean taking a job, whether it's corporate America or down the street from your home, working first, figuring it out, just like going to college. You don't have to dive into a four-year program. Listen, community college is phenomenal. We all mature at different stages in our life. You know, we learn about ourselves. And like, Ina, like you say, it's a it's the process of evolution of you as an individual. And I have to tell you, I am, I'm so glad that you, you mentioned that because I never want anybody to take away from this that you should immediately quit your job and... <laughs> Um, you know, follow that passion right now. Otherwise, like your life is going to be miserable. You guys, if you have a job, please 
keep it, that's what's going to be funding your entrepreneurial venture. So remember, think about it as the means to an end, right? Because you're going to need kind of like seed money for your business, right? To continue to grow it. I so love how you said that. <laughs> right. So just like keep keep your job to continue to fund your passion. Yep. But whatever it is that you're funding, make sure that it is actually your passion. So one exercise that I love to give people is if by the end of the year, right from now, it's like, you know, we're in March right now. I'm not sure when this is going up, but we're in March right now. By the end of the year, that's what, in nine months, you're going to be applying to be on the TEDx stage. Okay. Now, getting on TEDx for some people is like a once in a lifetime opportunity, right? Some people are multi TEDx speakers. Okay. That's right. And that's okay. But when you are on TEDx, you really get an influx of interest. Okay. Like that's going to really kick you off. It's going to set you up as the expert in that particular field. People are going to want to feature you on their podcast. People are going to want to write stories about you. People are going to want to talk about you everywhere. Right. So if you're at that moment where you're applying for a TEDx, knowing that this is probably going to be your life for the next year, and this is all you're going to be talking about all next year, what do you want? to be talking about? What do you want to be the expert at? Is it that thing that you've been making money at? And you know, there's really not that much passion there, but you know how to do it. Or the thing that really makes your heart sing, right? And um, I have this, this knack for taking a business idea or taking a, taking a passion and turning it into a six figure or seven figure business, like in my head, like I can tell you how, like what services and offers you should have, like, how do you turn this into a big thing? And sometimes people challenge me. They're like, well, Ina, I had one person ask me this twice on a podcast. What if somebody likes karaoke? Like, how would you ever turn your love for karaoke? And I'm like, oh, don't challenge me on this. Cause <laughs> I, like, I'm gonna like <laughs> pin you to the I ground. Love it, Ina. Yo, you'll right? figure it out. I know you will. So it, I mean, you can, <laughs> you can throw any, 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 anything that you love to do at me. And I can point at someone in this world who is making a ton of money on that topic right now. So if there's a ton of money, if there's a market for them, trust me, there's a six figure market for you to do that thing. Absolutely. And we talked about this, Ina, before we came onto the show is uh, it's so important too, right? To just do your research in general. If you have a passion, learn about your passion, right? It's not like, you know, if we love what we're doing or what, what we love what we want to do, well, research it a little bit, understand what it is that you really would get dive into, you know? And, and at the same token, if you're going to launch this business, make sure you're launching the business from the beginning with all the right tools, you yeah. know, that entails digital marketing, right? All the platforms. Right, right, right. And if I were to do that, if I said, if I were starting from scratch, okay, and I said, okay, what is it that I love to do? I have this exercise that, um, that I love doing is figure out or sit down and write down what is your like main offer, right? Like what can you help people do? Now think about, who is the perfect person who needs that? And then I want you to rank from one to 10. How excited are you to help that person with that problem? Okay, because I'm going to tell you right now, there's a million things that I could be helping people with. I have been making websites for 20 years. Can I make a mean website? I made both my websites and they look amazing. Okay, I, I, can, I can make an amazing website for anybody. Is that something that I really want to do? Is that a problem that I really want to solve with my time for the next year? No, it isn't. It isn't. My 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 heart is not on writing CSS and HTML and, and figuring out WordPress plugins. It's just not where my heart is. I'm really good at it, but it's just not it. So I would be asking that myself. What skill do I have that can help someone that I actually would love to help them with? And one thing that I love. I can't get enough of people having aha moments about their whole life, right? 
of people opening their eyes and realizing that their life can be limitless, that they can make as much money as they want, that they can live wherever they want, that they can have uh, the schedule that they want, like that, that eye opening, like, oh my God, like this can really be a thing. I love that. And that's where the global phenomenon came from. It's like, okay, I want to help more people who are ready to figure that out. And I'm going to tell you how to make it happen. There's a million mindset coaches out there. I'm not one of them. Mindset is part of it, but I'm really good at giving you the step-by-step. I'm telling you, this is what you do first. And then this is what you do second. And this is what you do third. And if you okay. try to start with the third step, I'm going to bring you back to step one. Like I'm yeah. really good at that. You know, that's so, awesome because you are so focused. I, I love speaking with you. I just, <laughs> the advice you give is just dead on. And I hope our audience is capturing this. And listen, at the end of the show, we are going to share Ina's contact information. And it's true. It's true what you say. Um, the, the, what I what I get out of our just this little piece of conversation that you just mentioned is is really is when you have a passion, you start learning about not only the industry that you're tackling, the niche, but you understand about yourself. You learn it as you evolve into this entrepreneurial world and your passions. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. And Ina is her case is she makes mean websites, awesome sites, you know, that just are spectacular, you know, they rock. But is that what Ina's career has evolved to? No, but it started somewhere and it started by knowing what you're good at and then taking that to another level. And that is what we're trying to get across to everybody that's listening to us today. And Ina, this is awesome. Great advice. I love it. Let's just touch a couple. Let's share some more points about. So when you're diving in, Mm -hmm. and you're trying to hit these six figures, okay? Let's talk about some bullets that they need to be aware of, understanding their markets, for example, okay. right? And actually, I, I'm so glad that you just I just wrote it down really big so that I wouldn't forget to mention that because I want to piggyback off of what you said about learning about your industry. So there's a huge misconception. So I speak to online coaches, right? People who want to monetize their expertise by helping other people, right? Which is basically like, independent teachers. That's what online coaches are. Okay. And uh, there's a big misconception here that if I decide to become a coach, that means that I have, I am done learning. I have learned everything that I need to learn. And now it's time to turn around and teach it to someone. And I can't tell you how many coaches have been stuck in this mentality of like, wait a minute, but I'm not done learning yet. Wait a minute, but I don't have a certification yet. Wait a minute, but I, I really need to like take that person's course first. Otherwise, I won't be able to teach that. And, and I'm like, you guys, being a coach is a constant state of learning. Thank you. Constant. It's a constant state. Of, I have not stopped learning. Um, when I tell you that I've had like four Whenever different right? For, for, for I've had like four different niches in four different years is because I've continued, you know, to invest in myself. I've continued to learn about myself. I've continued to evolve and really think critically about what I'm doing to see, is this still jiving with me? Is there a better person I could be helping? It's a constant state of evolution. So never believe for one second that that thing that you're deciding to do right now is the thing you're going to stick with for the next 10 years. Chances are, this is just the first step and next year is going to look even better. And the year after is going to look better. You just have to be brave enough to take that first step. It's the evolution of you as an individual, you as a professional. You know, that is phenomenal advice. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So listen, I, I wanted to just touch a little bit about because Ina has her own podcast. And one, thank you for being a guest here on T20E World. But talk to us about your podcast. Oh, my God. Um, so this is my fourth podcast to date okay. uh, because I've been podcasting since 2012. I'm a dinosaur in the age of podcasting. Yes. Uh, and it was only because, so I have a computer science background. Mm -hmm. So tech is just something that is very natural to me. And when I found out about podcasts, I wondered if I could do that can I do that for free or do I have to pay for it? So back in 2012, I was just curious. I still had a full-time job. I didn't have a business. I didn't have a business bank account, right? I wasn't like investing in, this, in business. Uh, but back in 2012, I'm like, can I do this for free? By that time, I had already 
purchased a, a web host, right? Which I was paying very little money for. I'm telling you like, it's free for the first three years and then you pay like $80 a year after like totally cheap. And I figured out a way to host my own podcast. So I, I'm like, okay, great. I don't need to pay anybody. I'm just going to experiment with this. And I was interviewing in my very first podcast, I was interviewing other entrepreneurs, just kind of giving them a place to come and talk about what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And that was all great. I had like 45 episodes in there, but I burned out with the editing process. I'm going to tell you, having a podcast, it, it sounds like super fun. It's a ton of work it and is. I, and it wasn't i wasn't focused on it like a business so i kind of dropped it and then i had another one and i dropped it and then i had another one and then i dropped it and then um you know for when i started my business after i quit my job i'm like i need to have a podcast and it was called trailblazing out of corporate life and it was amazing i have a hundred episodes in there if you go back and check them out awesome. every episode is like gold right it's like advice on online marketing for uh, trailblazing out of corporate life then this past year the pandemic hits yes and um i think that the pandemic really shook a lot of people like the ground that everybody was walking on right Absolutely. i had i had some troubles going on at home because i was at that point working at home i had a toddler who was going to uh daycare and i had a nine-year-old who was going to elementary school pandemic hits everything screeches to a halt now both kids are in the house with me while my husband is working full time and i I, I almost had a breakdown. I mean, it. I my my heart goes out to all the moms Absolutely. out there. Like parents had yeah. a much different experience than people totally who don't agree. have it. Right. We talked about this in one of our podcasts. Is what an amazing. Uh, you learn so much about yourself. You really do. Yeah. And last year was. You're right. The test. So yeah. many parents at home. They're, they're working full time. They got such responsibilities and even more responsibilities to make th things happen virtually. But yet you have a baby at home. Maybe you have two kids that are in school that need your help now because they can't connect. It's, right. I mean, it, it, yeah, my heart, <laughs> I feel for all those parents. God bless them. I, I mean, they're like super parents, I think. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, so. and, I'm, Kudos and I'm, to you. <laughs> thank you for saying that. And I'm, and I'm going to be like completely honest with you. I mean, my community in the online world is built mostly of people who don't have kids. I do have to say that my, most of my community is people who don't have kids. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I love them all to death. We just had very different experiences of the pandemic. Yeah. And some of my friends, they completely thrived in the pandemic because it removed all distractions, right? Now there is just, just them and their business and they just had to make it work. And I, I have friends who've made a ton of money in 2020 because they were able to just focus. There was nothing else for them to do. Um, in, in my case, case in my specific case um you know i was in the middle of launching one of my big programs uh and then just everything happened uh you know my son and i ended up getting some additional resources additional help to deal with our relationship because i'm like this pandemic is going to destroy my relationship with my son like it was like that yeah. uh so it was super super hard but in that process of like basically tearing myself down and trying to build myself back up I had a discovery, I had a revelation that I, I I got in touch with what I really want for my life. And that is not to just have a side business, to just make a tiny bit of money. My my purpose, like it from a from a self-fulfillment standpoint, yep. I want to fulfill my my full potential. Like I want to not leave any door uh unopened right any stone unturned i want to do everything i can in this life to basically win at the game of life right i only have one life i want to play it full out and when, when i had that realization i had to stop talking to an audience that just wanted to have side businesses right that's what that's what my realization was i'm like no i want to bring with me people who want to be the next global phenomenon people who want to play really big who want to be taking vacations to the maldives with their family on first class who are like people who have really big dreams and once i said those words out loud uh, that i, I know 
I want to be the next global phenomenon. I wrote it down in a little piece of paper and those words stayed with me. Um, so I realized then something has to change. When I'm done with this launch for my program, I have to figure out a way to speak to people who have really big dreams, who really want to make it, who are not just looking for ha to have a little bit of extra money in the bank. It's like, no, we're going to really do everything we can to expand our message worldwide. And that's where the global phenomenon came from. And it was amazing to realize that I could speak to my idols, to all those heroes that I had been following for years in the online coaching world. I had people like John Lee Dumas from Entrepreneurs on hey, Fire back to me. Right, JLD. Sure. I had JLD, Pat yeah. Flynn, uh, Pat Flynn, the ah, godfather Flynn. of podcasting, Love come that. on my podcast. He's such a nice guy, He's right? Um, I've had, you know, the Instagram expert, Subi Zimmerman. I've had Melissa Farr, an amazing coach and woman. I've had Laura Belgray, co founder of The Copy Cure with Marie Forleo. I mean, I've had amazing people come and just talk to me. And at first, I didn't know exactly what this podcast was going to be. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm here just interviewing them, just asking them about their experiences, where their grit comes from. And then it started to evolve into this wonderful thing where I'm like, you know what? I want to know what made you where you came from because every interview that i listen to with you in it people want to pick your brain about right. what you know about what advice you have i'm like no i want to know what was it was it like at home growing up with your parents that you had what was your first you know, foray into entrepreneurship how did you get there what did you think your life was going to be like then so now if you go to the global phenomenon all of the latest like the last 20 interviews have been a deep dive into that person's life. And it's something you're not getting anywhere else. Right. Um, and it, it's just been an amazing ride talking to all of these amazing people. Oh, Ina, thank you for sharing that. That is such awesome, awesome conversation and, and, and advice that you're sharing. Ina, I wanted to say thank you again so much for being a part of our show at T20E World. I think Again, I knew we would we would sync up immediately. You know, that energy that you bring to the table is just awesome. The advice that you shared with us today, it's critical to our listeners that you understand, listen, you have a passion. It's go for it. You got to start somewhere. Do your research ahead of time. You know, it's you can do it. Ian is a perfect example of how you take a business concept, a passion, you turn it into six figure salary income and your digital marketing platforms don't even hit 1k it's okay you can do it you can yeah. do it ina again thank you and i want to ask you one last question if you were to leave our listeners with one bit of advice what would that one bit of advice be is it okay if i have a two-parter because they're both really important Please. number one when you pick whatever it is that you want to do, don't follow the money. Follow, think of yourself as a next TED, TEDx speaker. What is it that you're talking about? And start working on that now and helping someone. Awesome. And my second part is in the process of doing that, tap into people that you already know. Think about that exercise that I told you about. How excited are you to work with that person? And picture them. Do you already know someone who fits that description? And send them a message right now and say, can I just talk to you? Can I just ask you a few questions? I'm just experimenting with something. Can you just help me out? This is somebody that you already know. They're going to say yes. They're going to be happy to be part of your process. So start there. Don't follow the money. Think about what it is that you want to do. And Talk to someone right now that you know that you feel like you could help and Love ask them, see how you can help them. Oh, Ina, thank you so much for that valuable advice. I love it. Ina, thanks again for being on T20E World. And to all our listeners, please show your love. Give us a five-star rating. Tell us what it was that you heard that impacted something that you love to do. That's what we're here for. So to all our listeners out there, Ina Covity and Hugo, and we are checking out.